The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everybody. Thank you all for uh, joining this uh, session on uh, how we can use email uh, nurturing uh, to uh, stay top of mind with our prospects. And uh, I'm the presenter. My name is Nilesh Patel. Uh, I'm the founder uh, of Lead Squad. And I'll be taking you through this session. So uh, what are we going to cover today? Uh, so I'll, I'll basically talk about what, what email nurturing is. Uh, I'm sure most of the folks here would have heard that name a lot. Uh, but I'll, uh, I'll sort of give you a couple of live scenarios to, to help you uh, see what kind of uh, what other brands or businesses are doing and uh, you know for us to learn uh, from them and then uh, who should be doing it uh, why we should uh, do it and um, I'll take an example on how to go about doing it and uh, I've got a couple examples set uh, for, for to, sh to show you on uh, you know a couple of live uh, examples there so these are the things we uh, will be covering today so um, I'll start with a couple examples um, so as you can see these uh, uh, Orange County emails here right so if you see they have been uh, sent uh, to uh, to my inbox so this is my inbox over a period of last uh, several months right and um, these emails have been in the nature of uh, sharing some information or something cool about uh, about Orange County or or the environment where Orange County is located, right? So this is a resort for uh, for people who do not know what Orange County is. Um, so it's a resort uh, which is uh, which is out there in in Karnataka and uh, pretty nice place. Uh, if you have been there, you would know, you would know what I mean. And so. So, so I'm I've been there. So I'm one of the subscribers on their email list, and I keep getting their emails one once in a while. And each of these their emails are very well, you know. You, you if you read them, there is a sort of story which uh, which they cover. So it creates a very good uh, impression, and uh, you know it always stays uh, top of the mind for me as a as a potential prospect for them. So I, I so that's an, an example of uh, of an email, right? Then uh, let's see. Uh, Another example. So, if you're familiar with the brand Carvale, right, um, you would know that uh, you know uh, they are one of the you know used car sales uh, brand out there, and um, they send emails like uh, the ones you see here. Now, all they're really talking about here is something to do with cars, right? Which is what their prospects want to hear. They're not selling anything if you just look at their subject line. And even if you look at their email body, that's not much about selling their, their own stuff. It's just they're educating their prospects, um, you know, with with various information available on the cars. So as you can see, this is another way anybody who's a car uh, enthusiast or uh, you know who's in the process of buying a car would love to have this sort of information coming to him or her to understand, uh, you know, what are the things to look into the car, you know, you know what are the new models coming in, and so on and so forth. So it's pretty nice. Uh, stuff that these guys are doing then another example is uh, this gentleman John Morrow uh, terrific guy and he writes about how to build a blog uh, and you know uh, build a subscribers to, to the blog so his blog is boost to blog traffic uh, so if you see all the emails he write is about people and how to uh, for, for, for subscribers on how to build their own blogs and uh, you can see uh, by looking at the uh, the various uh, you know subject lines here uh, what is that uh, you know he's trying to do in this is just trying to help people who want to build their own blog and in the process of doing so people subscribe to his list and sort of read through that right as you can see he's a, he's a guru in in this area is he can uh, he knows how to build a, a subscriber base of 13,000 or more in in less than six weeks right so so you you, you see the the power of uh, of doing this right so, um, so that's your uh, three quick examples, uh, and I'm sure there are tons of that. Uh, but these are just uh, a few to sort of uh, uh, highlight the the idea on email nurturing. Then, what is email nurturing? Um, so, it's a cost-effective way to stay top of mind with your prospects and customers. Um, so, obviously, you know that a lot of people would know that. Um, so, so what is it anyway? I mean, what what does it mean uh, when you say cost-effective and stay top of the mind? And so, what does it really mean? So simply put, you share information which your prospects and customers value and look forward to on a regular basis. 
So this could be a manual uh, process like you um, you create newsletter on a on a monthly basis or a quarterly basis, right? Or you have set up an automated uh, series of emails which will be delivered to your uh, uh, subscribers or the prospects. Or you have uh, you are sending emails uh, not only in an automated fashion, but also by taking care of uh, but by taking into account the prospect behavior. So you may say. If they visit a pricing page, then send this. If they don't visit, then send something else. You know, so something of that nature. So that's your uh, uh, you know quick overview of what email nurturing is. Now, what it is not. So this is a very common, uh, which I'm sure everybody is uh, you know familiar with. All kinds of unsolicited emails coming to your inbox, um, and they are always trying to sell you something, a product or a service or whatever. Uh, so this is definitely not email nurturing at all. It's just a it's just an unsolicited email finding its way into somebody's inbox and it's not email nurturing right so um, you would love to know email nurturing right you would love to do it right so how do you I mean how, how the key question which the marketer faces okay I have to send uh, information to my subscribers useful information of value to them now how do I help me help me find how can I uh, you know do this how can I find such information right now in the world of uh, the web, right, you, there's so much information out there that one cannot complain about it. There's always something which you can find out there which will be of value to your prospects. So you just have to go and find it. So web is full of information. You need to find what is relevant for your prospects. Some of the information you may already know because you are in a business so you, and catering to customers. So you would have some, history, some history, historical uh, information about uh, the customers and, uh, you know, for certain uh, uh, for certain type of businesses like training businesses or uh, you know um, could be a real estate business you would have you already have certain content piece available with you and you need to really format that in a fashion uh, which will be consumed by your uh, subscribers so for example if it's a training business you know you would have uh, you would give quizzes to your potential uh, cust to your customers when they subscribe to your program and that quiz can be broken down with you know, in simple in simple quizzes and can be you know put up on a website let's say for people to uh, you know take a you know use that or can be sent in an email uh, you know over uh, over a series of emails saying you know let's say if somebody um, has signed up for a, a program of uh, gate right so you you are doing a you're writing a gate exam and uh, in in an, in an electrical engineering uh, uh, you know department so you, you subscribe for a, a quiz uh, on one of the, let's say, uh, websites out there, and they start sending you, you know, last year's question papers uh, of Gate Academy, uh, of Gate for, uh, um, uh, for electrical uh, engineering. And then they would send you solutions for that after a few days, and then they'll send you another quiz. So if you see, uh, by virtue of that, you are actually you already have certain content which, you, which is out there for, uh, from in your business, which is what you're using to... Um, and nurture your prospects. Now the same goes true for other businesses as well. But in some, in in, in for example, in real estate, right? Uh, the brokers already know what are the rates and uh, rentals and other information in their respective, uh, uh, you know, geography where they operate. And if they find ways to pull it together, uh, they can share this with their uh, subscribers and um, about that. Or for example, if there's a new property coming in. A brokerage can take a view of uh, analyzing that new property, giving pro and cons to their to the customers, potential prospects, and share that information on a regular basis or whenever the new property comes up. So you have this information already available, uh, which is uh, what uh, you know business can put to use uh, fr from an email nurturing perspective. Then uh, there's a lot of uh, you know in news. So news is an evergreen source of uh, you know information. So any if you are in a business where there is a news element uh, out there, um, you know this is primarily true uh, for, uh, for for a lot of businesses. So, for example, if you are in financial services business, a new regulation comes in, which impacts the uh, certain type of investors. Uh, you can share that, uh, and this keeps happening throughout. So that's an exa important uh, and interesting source. And you have uh, bloggers and influencers out there who write about certain topics. So for example, uh, let's say if you are uh, SEO. Uh, you know, you work on search and optimization, and then there is a guy called Matt Cutts, right? He's a he works for Google and uh, in the web spam team. So uh, you know, a lot of folks follow his blogs, whatever he writes. 
Now, whatever he writes, uh, you know, is is news uh, on its own. So uh, you can pick what uh, he or somebody like that is saying if you are in that industry, and then share that with your, uh, you know, with your prospects and customers. So that's a, a important source uh, for you. So th there is no complaining on uh, where to find information. There is enough to do it, enough to find. Uh, we just need to uh, do that stuff. Now, who should be doing it? Uh, you know, so if your prospects uh, are searching or inquiring about the kind of products and services you sell um, uh, on the web, then uh, you should be uh, looking at doing it uh, because it uh, automatically implies that if they are searching, then very likely they would have an email address uh, uh, or an email inbox with them. And um, obviously, you should have or you have the willingness to do it on your own. Uh, if you're a small business, then you would like to do the stuff on your own. Or if you're a little bit larger business, then you may want to, you should have a budget to either hire somebody internally or outsource it to an agency. So if you don't have e either two, obviously, uh, then you're not a fit. You're not a candidate for email nurturing, uh, doing email nurturing. But if you if you are, then uh, you know these are the things you might need. Now, why you should do it? You're really serious about uh, you know staying top of the mind with your prospects, right? And you don't want to lose on the opportunity to upsell or cross-sell your products or uh, services to your subscribers. So you know you may be nurturing. Uh, you, let's say if you are a, a training business, uh, you sell a particular course, and uh, you you nurture your prospects uh, in, on an ongoing basis, and you have another additional course or an advanced course of the same type the the prospect has taken in the past. You can, uh, if you talk about discounts, sending the discounts to them, then there there is a likelihood that you may win sales opportunities by doing so. Now, how to go about it? So first, uh, first and foremost, uh, you need to have uh, the process and the setup to uh, to build the subscriber base. So obviously, buying list is a very common uh, philosophy. Uh, but as I said earlier, buying a list, sending a blast is not email nurturing. So um, you know that's not what I would call email nurturing. It's just uh, uh, an unsolicited email sending types. So. Um, so you need to have a process to build a subscriber base. So that's very important. So you have to subscribe to forms. So you need to have a newsletter subscription form on your website. You need to create a, a, you know, a tab on your Facebook page uh, where you can collect the subscribers, uh, your potential subscribers information if they visit your Facebook page. Uh, you have, a, if you're running a blog, you can uh, you know, subscribe to blog. Uh, you can have an RSS feed set up. So, uh, you know, if anybody's interested in your blog, they can subscribe to that automatically. Uh, you have uh, offers running offers on your website. So this could be, let's say, um, let's let's just take an example here. Um, I'll just pick uh, our own website. And um, so we recently did a, a research uh, report uh, where we talked about how pay-per-click marketing is going to look like in 2014, and with that, uh, so that research it's a research report uh, which we invested in, and that is available uh, to be uh, downloaded on our blog. And so I'll just quickly show you how that looks like. So that's an example of if anybody downloads that sort of information or this guide for in the case uh, in this, you know, I can this pops up first. So this is a create conversion optimized landing pages. So if anybody comes to our website is interested in this sort of information they would download it and you know subscribe to uh, uh, our mailing list right so that's what I was uh, uh, I was mentioning too and then uh, you may you may want to uh, uh, you may want to uh, spend money on other paid channels uh, for per, for promoting your business or, or your service or a product and that uh, information you may, in the process of doing so, you would capture email addresses, which will also become part of your subscription list. The, the, when you do so, a lot of businesses, when they spend, uh, when, even when they have a form on the site and, and all other places, uh, a lot of small businesses typically do not capture that in a system. It's very important that you do so because what happens is you would capture those email addresses and most of them would go into your inbox that's how most of the web forms are set up that if anybody fills the form it gets it sends in you an email now you may get a lot of emails like that let's say uh, but if they are not organized and stored properly you will not be uh, able to reuse them uh, for sending any future emails so you need to set all this up so that they they are captured in a system 
uh, first and second that system allows you to send emails again so if you capture them in Google Excel sheet let's say then you have to again take them out and put that in another system to do it so if you if you use a system let's say like lead squared where you capture all the subscribers information then you don't really have to you know go to another system to send an email because email sending ab ability is part of lead squared so something like that you should uh, set up then um, there are a couple of formats uh, which uh, I would talk about which would be uh, uh, which one can use to uh, you know do the nurturing so first is your typical newsletter format um, so basically if you want to run a newsletter then a uh, few things you have to sort of uh, <clears throat> agree uh, and agree upon or find out or, or, or work towards is uh, so audience you know what kind of audience you attract so for example in our case um, you know mostly uh, people who sign up for uh, our newsletters would be digital marketers or uh, you know business owners small business owners and and, and those kind of folks so uh, so we know who our audience is so we prepare our, the content which is relevant for our audience and then we have uh, we create a frequency on uh, you know how soon or how many times are we going to send this newsletter so that's your um, one type of um, uh, email nurturing format then you have the automated uh, email nurturing format so when I say automated uh, meaning uh, you if somebody subscribes to a particular uh, uh, you know information that I would call as a trigger and that trigger will uh, will essentially send an automated series of emails which is a predefined content uh, and the emails will be sent on a predefined schedule so for example um, you know let's just uh, take an example here uh, which is uh, a home loan uh, example so let's say if if if, if an individual is shopping for a home loan and um, they they are looking they sign up on a website which says compare uh, you know compare various home loans available or home loan pricing whatever so as soon as they subscribe to that uh, saying okay I want to compare they share the information an email immediately goes to them with the comparison information of various uh, home loan uh, options available then uh, the the company who is providing uh, this comparison information can send another email uh, sends another emails after one day which says three tips on how to choose your home loan provider now this information is uh, delivered to an individual who is searching for home loan so it makes a lot of sense to send this information after one day uh, saying okay what are the uh, how you would actually go about choosing a home loan provider then you may uh, you would predefine an email saying uh, how to negotiate the best deal on your home loan rate uh, on your home loan that again you can um, you would predefine the information and send it uh, after let's say three days of the subscription then after five days you will send uh, you know what are the top uh, home loan schemes out there for you to consider in 2014 let's say and that information would uh, again go to the subscriber who just downloaded um, uh, who, who downloaded a few days ago and then you may uh, you may send after five days or seven days um, you know a guide which says download like uh, home home loan buyers guide and that information is, is like a full-blown guide which has all the parameters of how to choose a home loan or, or whatnot so really if you see this uh, drip uh, this automated f uh, emails will be delivered based on when the subscriber signs up so let's say if you have a subscriber who's looking for home loan uh, today and they subscribe to it so for the next seven days they are going to get this email then uh, you may uh, get a subscriber who signs up let's say after one month and the same series of emails will go to them after starting from the day the subscriber uh, joins into this program so basically um, if you see this is triggered by a particular uh, uh, inst uh, by a particular event which is your uh, subscription to uh, which is your interest in comparing uh, home loans and as soon as they compare a home loan you start uh, this automated uh, series of emails right so that's uh, your uh, one example of a drip now let me see if I can show you something live here uh, on um, on our system so there is a home uh, there is a home loan drip set up here which I'll sort of quickly show you so in lead squared I'm just taking an example with lead squared it's easy for me to do that is uh, we have set up a home loan drip so I'll I'll quickly show you how that uh, looks like so you basically uh, you start you select who the recipient is you select the list or uh, then you select uh, the trigger 
on when this will be started and the actions and these are the actions so it's like the first action will will happen immediately the second will happen after one day so second email will will go after one day then uh, the third email will go after three days uh, the uh, fourth email will go after five days and the fifth will go after seven days so this is one example I've set up another one here which is for um, which is for a digital marketing course so um, we're planning to put one course together um, so that's an, um, this course of let's say it will be a, um, in a series of 10 emails uh, which will have different aspects of digital marketing so we'll say we'll get started with website SEO so let's say the SEO is the first part so an email will go to uh, this individual whenever they subscribe to this course this program and the second one will day after two days saying what are the new SEO paradigm shift whatever is happening the way Google is modifying the the SEO landscape then how do you go about generating leads to AdWords so that will go after four days uh, then after six days uh, an email with the lead generation with Facebook ads and so on and so forth so as you see all these emails are predefined so I'll just open an email here uh, as a sample so it says um, hi first name uh, this is the fifth video tutorial of lead square digital marketing course and then you can you know click here to uh, you know start playing the course so what this essentially is doing is whenever the traffic hits your website if they subscribe to it at, at that point the automated emails take over and uh, they will nurture the prospect throughout that uh, uh, the the time frame when uh, in which that drip was set up so so you are able to automatically nurture your uh, prospects uh, uh, you know in, in this fashion so so that's what uh, uh, these are the elements I wanted to cover today um, I can uh, stop for a few questions here I see a couple of questions here what about the uh, unsubscribes uh, so this is a question from others he's asking what about the unsubscribers uh, do you send emails to those guys as well who have unsubscribed from your second email no so if somebody is unsubscribed then they really have to resubscribe again to be a part of the email uh, to part to, to be um, uh, you know to be part of the program so once they unsubscribe then emails don't go to them okay well it was fast session uh, I was able to cover this uh, pretty quickly I uh, are there more questions out there we can uh, take uh, questions on audio as well today because we have time so happy to uh, give you control of the voice if you would like to perfect I think there are no more questions so I will close the session uh, and uh, thank you all for joining this uh, I hope it was a useful session for you and I uh, will see you next week or the week after when we have another webinar going for you thank you all and have a good day